what's wrong? I killed her. I killed her. Killed who? Thad, you've been dreaming. Dream? Uh, yes. Yes, I was dreaming. You wouldn't kill anyone? No. No, but it was so real. I had a knife. And I chased her and I... Thad, now quiet down and go back to sleep. You don't have a knife, Thad. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. That's right, honey. All a dream. Now you go back to sleep, Thad. And don't you worry. I'm right here. I'll never, never leave you. Just go to sleep. I'll never, never leave you. Never. to nightclubs the music is too square and the prices are too high but tonight i had a call from an entertainer and it sounded like work for loot not at the piano the last show was just winding up i followed instructions and gave my name to the head waiter he followed instructions and led me to a corner table that had been reserved and there he was my client Thad Clinton. Not back in the suitcase it's so dark in there look you either entertain the people or back you go no, Thad, please. I'll be good. I know. I can do my mind reading act. Your mind reading act? Sure, go on. Blindfold me. Okay. <laughs> now then, have somebody in the audience hold up an object. All right. Will someone please hold up an object? Thank you. All right, then, Miriam, what is it? What is what? What is the lady holding up? How should I know? I'm blindfolded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd caught Thad's act before. He was a pretty good ventriloquist, but his material wasn't so hot. I wondered just why he wanted to see me. He should have called in a good writer. Staccato. How are you? I'm Thad Clinton. Oh, good, good. I uh, see so you have a pretty good house tonight. Yeah. Johnny, I need help. What kind of help? My wife is missing. She's been missing for over a week now. Well, police? Yeah, three days ago. I filed a missing persons report, but so far I haven't heard anything. Well, that's only three days. I know, I know. The police have a lot of cases like this, but... Well, I thought I could hire somebody to work on it exclusively. Look, Mr. Clinton, New York is a very big city. And a missing person's case could take a long time. Look, I know all that. But if you just look into this, I mean... Well, I thought maybe you could get a lead on her right away. Maybe. Oh, Mike. Maybe not. Well, the cops, the police have already done all the routine work. The hospitals and the morgue. They, they sent a guy to the rooming house to ask questions, but he didn't find out anything. My wife is a very friendly type. I'm sure she must have told somebody where she was going or why. And you have no idea why she left you? No. Does anybody at the rooming house have any idea? Well, Al Donovan's a very good friend. You know, I have to work nights, so he used to see that Miriam didn't get lonely. Yeah? Well, you know, he'd take her to movies and things like that. He's a swell guy. Yeah. Uh, you say your wife's name is Miriam. Yeah. But the same as the dummy? Yes. Miriam, my wife, named the dummy when I first got it. Well, she got a kick out of that. Got a picture? No, not here. Can you give me a description? Well, she... She had dark hair, soft and shiny, and lovely white skin. She had deep, penetrating eyes. She's about medium height. She was always beautiful. Look, we had a good, happy life together. That's why none of this makes any sense, her leaving like this. If you just go over there and ask some questions, I'll pay you anything you want. You have no idea why she left you? No. All right, uh, you give me the address, and I'll, I'll check into it in the morning. In the morning? Can't you go there with me tonight? 
<laughs> Look, it's pretty late, fella. No, they're all show people. They stay up late. Please, Johnny. The sooner the better. Okay, tonight. It was almost two in the morning as we left the club and headed for the rooming house. This was kind of a strange kid. Kind of troubled. On the way over, Thad told me again how happy they had been for several years, he and his wife. That's Charlie Bingham. Remember him? No, I don't. He used to be a magician. Really great. You want to start with him? No, he doesn't pay much attention to anything except TV around here. Talk to Al Donovan. He made Miriam. Makes the best dummy in town. That's swell. I'm sure he'll still be up. He likes to work at night and sleep all day. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah? Well, hello, Thaddeus boy. Al, this is a friend of mine. Any friend of yours is a friend of yours, so take him to your room and feed him your coffee. <laughs> That's a joke, son. Oh, you had me fooled. Come on. Sit down if you can find yourself a spot or I'm liable to paint a new expression on your face. How's Miriam? She's fine. Uh, that paint chip any? Nah. Oh, come on, let's see. No, she's fine. Oh, come on. Careful, Al. Hey, she looks great. You still love me, honey? I always will, you big handsome brute. <laughs> Haven't lost the old touch, eh? You never could speak for me, you biggie. And take your paws off me. I guess I better put her back. How do you like this guy? I make him the best doll he's ever had, and what thanks do I get? You in the business? <laughs> no, not today. You're lucky. It's slow, real slow. I used to have an act like that here, only better. Really? Yeah. I used to work with two, maybe three dolls. But it gets slow, so now I make the dolls for the guys who want to knock their head against the stone wall. <laughs> Cream of sugar? Yeah, please. That tells me you're quite a good friend of his and his wife. That's right. Fan, help yourself. Here you go. It's hot. Thank you. Hey, Al, what do you think about Miriam's disappearing? That's like I told the cops. I mean, who says she disappeared? A lot of dames leave guys flat, you know. Miriam wouldn't leave me. Look now, kid. I'm only telling you what I think. I'm older than you. I've known a lot of dames. But I told you before, I thought you was wrong in going to the cops, and I still do. Thad says you spent quite a bit of time with his wife. To keep her from getting lonely, that's what he said, isn't it? Yeah, so? So, uh, she must have talked to you, right, Al? I mean, if she was planning on leaving Thad, she must have mentioned it to you. Uh, you being such a uh, kind friend, uh, as you seem to have been. You're just full of questions, aren't you? Yeah, I'm loaded. Are you a cop? I'm a private detective. A private? You jerk. First you call the cops, now you're dragging a private eye. And what for? Because a no good dame runs out on you, that's what for. Al, don't talk like that. It's the truth, and if you weren't such a schnook... Look, buddy, I don't like being pushed around. First the cops, now you. You got an idea I was friendly with her? You think maybe I talked her into walking out on the little man here? Well, not on your life, buddy. Not for the likes of her. Cut it out, Al. Dad, let him go on. You bet I'll go on. Sure, I saw a lot of her while Dad was at work. Why not? Now she takes a powder and jerk her goes wild. First the cops, now you. Well, don't try to put me on the spot because I'm leveling with you. He's too dumb to see it, maybe, but that dame was a real tramp. Oh, oh. Let go of me. That's a lie. Easy, Thad. Ask anybody in the building. She probably left with a guy, any guy. Easy, Thad. Now get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Just trying to keep my nose clean. Yeah, you're luck lucky you don't keep it broken. Get out of here. He's a liar. Now, He's a wait liar. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I won't do any good. 
It just won't do any good. Did you, did you, did you know that he felt that way about your wife? No, but he's alive. Now, wait a minute. Just calm down. I have to go back. No! Oh. Miriam's in there. Now, look, kid, I'm telling you right no. now. My suitcase. Miriam. Oh, that's different. All right, uh, where's your room? Right up there. All right, come on. Come on. Now, you just lie down and try to cool off. I'll get the dummy right in it. Don't you knock? I came for the dummy. Yeah. I was just having another look. You know, this job is really great. That kid should be real grateful to me. Yeah, the dummy, please. Look, um, what I told you about his wife, that was on the level. Don't believe me. Ask around. I will. dreams. What kind of dreams? About her. Ever since she left, last night he dreamed he found her, and he was so angry he killed her. He killed her? Yes. Too bad. Poor Thad. Good night. Poor Thad. Marion? Marion, tell me more. Scout. The only problem is my date tonight wasn't half as cute or half as nice as you are. Oh, thank you. Are you one of Miriam's friends? Miriam? Oh, that's right. She's not here anymore. I keep forgetting that. Because <laughs> all the handsome men that ever came around here were friends of Miriam's. Would you mind if I sit down? Oh, no. Come on. Be my guest. You know what? What? I like you. And you know why? Why? Because you look like my Uncle Harry. Really? No, not really. It's just that I like to talk about my Uncle Harry, and that seemed like a good lead-in. I can't do anything without a cue. I'm an actress. You're kidding. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of kidding. There's kidding me, and there's kidding my Uncle Harry, and there's kidding agents and producers, and... <laughs> never was, never will be. But poor Uncle Harry really wanted me to be. Look, um... How long have you, have, have you lived here? About a year. I live here because it's cheap. And I can save my money for cab fare. So in case some of my auditions get a little rough, like tonight, I can always take a cab. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Look, uh, tell me more about Miriam and her friends. Oh, Miriam had lots and lots of friends. <laughs> Only you said you weren't one of them. That's right. Well, you didn't miss much. Frankly, I always thought she was rather plain. <laughs> what do you want to talk about her for? Uh, her husband is looking for her, and I'm trying to help him. Ha! Come again? I said ha, 
as in ha ha. I don't get the point. She's been gone a week, and now he wants to find her. But boy, was he mad when she took off. <laughs> he didn't want to find her then, no sir. What do you mean? I mean, he says to me, if she wants to run out on him, so what does he care? Then he asked me to go out for a night in the town. Well, that's a normal reaction for a man who's been deserted, isn't it? Oh, honey, don't tell me about the normal reactions of men. I know that backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards. <sighs> but this voice-throwing guy, <sighs> he's sideways. Translation. I went out with him once. Just once, last week. <sighs> now, I've been out with some weirdos, but never two weirdos. I mean him and that dummy. You mean he, he brought the dummy along on the date? Mm-hmm. Only I was the dummy for going out with him in the first place. Oh, he was swell at first. But after a couple of drinks, well, they seemed to hit him pretty hard, and he almost passed out, so I, I loaded him into a cab, and along with me in that two-ton suitcase. And he's sitting there, you know, with his head back. I figure he's out of it. So I'm sitting there, and I think, wow, what a deadbeat. And you know what? You had a conversation with the dummy. How did you know? I'm just guessing. You must be as creepy as he is. Good night, Scout. No, wait a minute. No, look, wait a minute. Listen, you don't look like my Uncle Harry at all. As a matter of fact, I don't even have an Uncle Harry. Look, well, what was the conversation with the dummy? Look, I don't want to. Like I said, it was, it was weirdo. Did he talk about his wife? Well, it was a dummy that talked, and she said... It said, well, I guess it was him, said I shouldn't be out with him on account of he was a married man and all that. I mean, here he is sleeping, and this suitcase is giving me a lecture. I mean, it's got to be him, doesn't it? I mean, who needs it? Talking about the mother I've seen him. dream? I mean, I've had it several times. I'm out on the street looking for my wife, and I see her walk by me, but she doesn't even recognize me. Then what happens? So I follow her to a court hotel. Court? I follow her there, and I'm real mad because she didn't recognize me. So I take out a knife, and I follow her up the stairs, and then I wake up! Court Hotel. Uh, have you ever been to a hotel named the court? No, it's just the place of the dream. Sounds pretty wild. It is weird. I wouldn't kill Miriam. I don't remember ever being mad at her. Never? I was hurt and upset when she left, but... I mean, I was never mad like I am in this dream. Well, look, dreams can get pretty mixed up. You said you carried a knife in the dream. Do you carry a knife? Never. It was a big switchblade knife in the dream. And you don't remember ever being in a hotel named the court? No, that's the upsetting thing about it, this dream. After I had it a couple of times, I got scared. That's why I called you. I'm never going to feel good again until I can find Miriam and find out why she left me. Look, look, uh, I don't like to bring this up, but... Supposing she left you because of another man. She wouldn't do that. What if she did? No! Well, I told you not to listen to Al Donovan. He's a liar. Miriam's a good girl. She loves me and she's faithful to me. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, but I won't listen to any talk like the kind we heard from Donovan. All right. I'll check around tomorrow. See what I can turn up. I'll go down to headquarters, see some of the boys and missing persons. See what they found out. All right. And I probably take better part of the day, so if I don't catch you here, I'll catch you at the club. Fine. One other thing, I'll need a picture. Oh, yeah. It's a snapshot of Miriam and me on our honeymoon. It's not very good. It'll do fine. Well, Johnny, if you find out anything... I'll call you right away. I checked out five different court hotels. This was the sixth. I showed the snapshot of Miriam and Thad Clinton to the desk clerk. He told me the woman had registered there last week. And then she left. She just took off about three days ago. She left her clothes and everything. And she didn't pay her bill. Are you sure you recognize her? Oh, sure. I recognize the fella, too. He was here? Yeah, he came to see her the day after she checked in. I had to ask him to leave. They were yelling at each other, making a big fuss. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
That night, while Thad was at the club, I visited his rooming house. I had called Sergeant Sullivan and told him what had happened so far. I also told him about Thad and his apparent split personality. I promised to call him back in one hour. That gave me time for a quick search, and it wasn't in vain. Not back in the suitcase. It's so dark in there. Sorry, but if you either entertain the people or back you go. Now, you tried to sing, and you can't. And you tried to tell jokes, and you can't. Now, just what can you do? I can talk without moving my lips. That's more than you can do. Okay, back in the box. No, Thad, please. I'll be good. I know. I can do my mind-reading act. Your mind-reading act? What's going on here? Go on with your act, then. It's a bomb scare, that's all. All right, folks, do just as the policemen say. There's no reason to panic. Come on, Miriam, let's entertain the folks as they leave. Something's wrong, Thad. I don't like those policemen here. Keep going, Thad. Uh, Miriam, what did you say about your mind-reading act? Never mind the act, Thad. This is serious. I'm worried about those policemen. Don't break up the act, Thad. Just keep it going. Here. I'll hold up an object. All right, now you ask her what it is. What is this, Miriam? He knows, Thad. He knows all about it. What? He found the knife. What knife? It's no use, Thad. If he found the knife, then he knows what you did with it. What do you mean? He'll tell you because he knows. He knows about your wife. My wife? What about my wife? Tell her what happened. Tell him what happened, Miriam. You killed her, Thad. You made her go to the park with you, and then you killed her and hid the body. No. Oh. Where did he hide the body, Miriam? Where's the body? This isn't true! Let her talk, Thad. She knows we don't want to hurt you. We want to help you. You need help, Thad. Miriam knows this. He hid the body in the brush behind the statue of Bolivar. No! You need help, Thad. She was no good. And when you found out what she was really like, you couldn't help yourself. You lie. Just like Al, you're a liar! Everybody lies! She lies! 